Welcome back, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us again. I really appreciate all of your comments and the views. It was an amazing response. We felt the love, so thank you guys so much. Absolutely, it's great to be back and you know, we're excited to be making some more. And uh, we've got some other plans going on, been talking to some other glass blowers about some on the torches and uh, got some other plans for some off the torch videos for you too. If, uh, if you're a glass blower or you know someone else in the industry who wants to be on the torch or just come talk about your work, how you got into the industry, anything like that, we would absolutely love to have you. Yeah, or tool makers or anything like that, anything that's relevant to the industry, we'd love to have you on the show, let people know what you're doing and just talk about glass. Absolutely, just shoot an email to onthetorch at revereglass.com and we'll, uh, we'll get going. Cool. I wanted to thank you guys for the amazing response for the online school, which I launched about a week and a half ago now. Thank you to everyone who signed up. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for the feedback on the structure of the classes and the quality of the videos. It means a lot, I've put a lot of work into it. And we're having an exciting workshop at the online school on August 7th, 2020, which is in a couple of weeks. It's with my friend, Dan Hoffman, who's an amazing glass artist. He works on such a small scale with so much detail, it's totally amazing. He's in a league of his own. So. It's like mind blowing, you know, even looking at the pictures, I'm so excited to, you know, see what he's doing in person because it is so tiny. Yeah. You can check the link right below us to sign up. Go to my website, revereglass.com. And I'd love to see you in the class. You'll be able to comment, talk to me and Dan and ask questions. We'd love to see you there. Absolutely. And speaking of questions, if you guys have anything you want to see us do on the torch or other ideas, definitely drop them down below. And uh, don't forget, we will giving, be giving away the demo to uh, somebody who comments and stick around to the end for last week's giveaway. Yeah, definitely you guys like and subscribe, turn on those notifications and watch this video all the way through so that you can find out who's the lucky person who got that piece. Nice. We wanted to thank our sponsor, Mountain Glass Arts. They've come back to support us again for season two, and they are an awesome place to get color, tubing, tools, supplies, whatever you need. Everything you need to, to blow glass, you can get from Mountain Glass. I really love their color supply, how much variety they have, and when I look at the colors, I'm just overwhelmed with all this excitement about the different things I can make. When you hit them up, say hi to Joe for me and tell him that you saw this in the video and I think he'll even give you a little discount. Nice, thanks again to Mountain Glass and let's hop into that demo. Cool guys, we'll see you in the studio. Welcome guys. First thing I'm gonna do is turn my torch on and get ready to go on this pendant. Get that mirage flame going. I'm sure we're talking about something here, you know, maybe the shape, maybe, who knows? Who knows what we're talking about? <laughs> get some color out of the kiln here you had prepped up. Uh, I forget, what color is this? I believe this is Calypso. Oh, okay. Nice. Is it? One, one of those like semi-transparent, like uh, moonstone-y looking ones. Maybe it's a moonstone. It might be Calypso. It's a Anyway, it's a light blue transparent color and I like both of those colors very much. So it's probably one of those. I blew out this bubble with the blow tube. You guys have seen that before in tons of videos. So just thought I'd start right here and show you from this point. Totally. Marver that guy a little bit, shape him up. And you're gonna, what you're gonna be doing with this is cutting off some little sections to make an encalmo for the actual piece you're gonna be making. Exactly. And we went over and making an encalmo uh, in the first season of On the Torch. And this is just a way to use it in a more complicated piece. Totally. So we'll do a little bit of a recap here. You know, you're gonna go in with a precise Lynx flame, really focus an area and do a flame cut, pulling off one of those little kind of cups, like a little cup of glass there. You can see it getting thin and then separating and there we go I have a nice little cup of glass and now you're just gonna make a few more of those I think you'll make uh, three or four of this color and then switch to a different one so just close that end up make a nice round bottom make sure it's nice and even and that'll make sure the section that you pull off is nice and even which will definitely help when you're making the piece yeah that's a really good point Kevin is that you want to do each step as best as you can and keep it as centered as you can so that when you put those components together you have less work to do where you're fighting the piece or fighting the center just going back in with another punty here and you know kind of repeating that process prep may be a little repetitive but it's definitely worth you know doing all the work ahead of time so you're not trying to keep your piece hot or get it in and out of the kiln a bunch stuff like that yeah well a lot of this stuff is very repetitive and there's beauty in the repetition. It's meditative, 
that you get to kind of practice the same thing over and over again and really like hone your skills while you're repeating yourself and getting that muscle memory in that's huge muscle memory is huge you know everybody's always like oh kevin you must be great at blowing glass and i got no muscle memory so i know i know how to talk about it though there's my friend dina um in the green scarf and as some of you guys know i live in a place where there's a glass studio and also a jewelry studio and dina's one of the jewelers who works at the studio once in a while her work is really amazing and she makes octopus influenced jewelry oh very cool do you know where to find her work yeah she's on facebook and etsy i think her brand name is octopus me nice nice we'll put her name and the and the brand up on there so you guys can check her out oh we wanted to check out this color is it cools dustin was like kevin you got to see this it, it does look very nice the color really pops as it's it, cool in there it like turns from white and then it goes I think it's clear when you work it, then it turns to white, and then it gets pink. It's like a really cool transition. I love watching it. It's so cool how, how much some of the colors change when you heat them up, you know. All the cadmiums kind of look orange-ish when you're working them, and then they cool, and wow, a whole bunch of different colors. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to have seen the progress of the color technology since I began blowing glass in 1995 now there's just such a variety and a palette of different colors and reactive colors and cfl and glow in the dark and it's it's pretty amazing to see and it's awesome as an artist to have so many choices like this color for example is called antidote by glass alchemy i love this color it's super buttery smooth doesn't boil or discolor at all and it's just a really nice green even when we were doing the first season of on the torch colors like this weren't weren't really around you know really smooth like that right yeah absolutely and there was especially when a new color would come out that hadn't been in the industry before it was always just like a super hype color and everybody wanted it and they were impossible to get and you had to know somebody you knew somebody uh, yep yep but uh, they're just becoming more widely available so you're just using your rod holder there so you can get the whole rod in there be a little too hot for your fingers right next to the flame there and now you just melt that little end of the rod in yeah, I usually push it in a little bit with my tweezers just to make sure that I'm not catching any bubbles or something like that. And um, yeah, it's a great tool. Now you're going to just put on a 10 mil punty so you can get the whole mass of glass hot without getting the connection too hot and having it flop around. So I'm just heating it up here, getting it all nice and even, and then collecting it, forming it into a sphere. Letting gravity kind of pull it out, elongate it a little bit since you know uh, know what you'll be using it for later. Might as well get it started now. Yeah, that's a really good point, Kevin. It's a, a pre-shaping is pretty critical in glass. I learned this when I was at California College of Arts and Crafts. And you basically want to try to prep your glass as much as possible for the final shape. And that's called pre-shaping. Nice. So now you just grab one of those little uh, sections back out of the kiln and you're going to trim it up so that it's ready to seal up to another one and you're going to start your Encalmo. Encalmo is spelled E-N-C-A-L-M-O and it's an Italian word. I believe it might even be Venetian. I think it means to connect or connection. Just taking your scissors there, cutting that lip off, and you want the two openings to be the same size and both be even so that you have a nice even seal all the way around. Just pulling that little piece off and trying not to get that piece that I'm cutting off to tag onto the piece so move it over to the side and sometimes when I cut it it likes to curl back and touch the piece so you got to move your shears around and kind of play with it so you don't tag your piece with it and by tag you mean um, kind of like spot weld itself onto the outside exactly exactly so I just connected these two together and this is the start of the Encalmo. I'm going to detach the punny, blow take, that out and attach another one. Take your tweezers there and pull that little bit of clear off because you don't want any clear in the middle of your next connection. You know, When you open the hole you might see that in the, in the wall of the piece. It's very true. You want to be careful with the clear and you want to be careful when you're making connections and seals that there aren't little pieces of clear in there because that will come through at the end in your piece. So you took those two sections and blew them out so now they're one nice even bubble 
and you're gonna open a hole in the end and connect up another one. And Como was a technique that was really became popularized in Venetian glass as the technology of glass flowing became more advanced and the skill level of people became more advanced making incomos got developed and stacking these rings became a more popular item in Moronese glass. And this is all classical soft glass work that they were doing these incomos in. Yeah, that's these, this is goblets, vases, things like that. And now of course, you know, it's adapted to American pipe making. Pretty amazing, you know, something that's been around for you know, thousands of years. Well, that's what Americans do best. Is they take <laughs> something from another country that's been around for many years, adapt it a little bit, and call it their own. <laughs> yeah, we sure do. So you're just going to take those sections there, pull off that clear once again, and just uh, shape them up, get them all into one section. You can see that the piece in the front is very transparent. And it's going to change to be opaque after the piece has been cooled down. Totally, those um, the purple gets very transparent while you're working it. Yeah. <clears throat> Blowing it out and just shaping this bubble, trying to keep it nice and even as I add more pieces on. Right, you don't leave any creases or you know any any bubble shape left from each individual section. It's all nice and smooth on the inside and out. Just shaping the walls, blowing it out a little bit, and making sure that that wall thickness stays consistent all the way through, and then pop that bubble. Making sure to melt that bubble trash back in, and then just using your back of your jacks there to flatten it up, open up the hole, and you know just keep on connecting. I love flaring the glass open with jacks. I like that I get to move it really fast and consistently even. Flaring is one of my very favorite things to do. I gotta say it's actually one of my favorite things to, to shoot too because it is so satisfying to watch, mm -hmm. you know. Flaring a goblet foot or something when it's yeah. super hot, you're like, whoa, look at that. It's just like, I don't know, the feeling, you know, as you guys get better at better in glasses, the feeling of moving that and watching it open and and flare is really cool. Yesterday I was working on a piece for a friend of mine and I had to make a big flare off a 16 millimeter tube to connect it to a piece and I was just like, yeah, flaring. Mm, nice. <laughs> <laughs> just making another connection there. Just connecting the blue and purple pieces together. I love that blue. Yeah, these uh, blue and purple is honestly one of my favorite color schemes, especially this kind of pastel blue. I uh, actually have a few pieces of my own that, uh, that have this color scheme. It's true. We're looking at one right now on the table. It was actually on the table in last week's episode. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, the uh, Joachim Glass uh, Head Scrambler. Yeah, if you guys want to check out the last On the Torch Season 2, Episode 1, we had a JoJo piece on the table, super talented glass blower, and it's actually the same colors that we used for this video, which was shot months before that <laughs> yeah, other one. Weird coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> So just uh, now taking all your sections there and you're going to make sure that's nice and even, kind of get it into a nice round bubble because um, you're eventually going to be making this into a disc. Yeah, and even switching the access. So we got to make sure that we keep it really round so that when we switch access, it will be like the bubble was formed in that direction. Totally. And by that, we mean turning the blow tube 90 degrees to where it is. So it'll be coming off the side, if you will, of yeah. the current bubble. Exactly. In glass blowing, we call that switching the access. So you're just going to open up a hole on the other end, and before we get to that, you're going to switch the end your blow tube is on so you can shape the other end of the bubble where your current blow tube is connected. Yeah, and there's a lot of solutions like this, just like with anything in glass, and the way that I do it is not the end all to how glass blowing is done, it's simply the way that works for me, the way that I've learned and developed and adapted from the people that I've learned from. Some people would choose to attach a punny and blow the other side to be even that way. But I think because of my furnace training, I prefer to work off the blow tube as if it was a furnace blow pipe. Totally. So you usually have things one ended, you know, a, an attachment only on one end unless you really need that punty. Yeah, unless there's a special circumstance, I tend to work like this. So just going in on that area where you took your blow tube off and uh, heating that in, just making it nice and round on that end as well. And you guys saw that there's been about 60 minutes so far that have been spent on this project. And it's really important to kind of note that that you know these videos are sped up and edited, and this isn't real-time glass blowing. 
but real-time glass blowing, you should definitely be ready to commit multiple hours to a piece if you want to make something nicer than a spoon. Totally. I, I know. I wish it just only took 12 minutes in so far. That'd be right. great. You could really crank these out. Yeah. So going in with your reamer there, just opening up, and this is the hole where you'll be switch, switching your axis. Yep. So getting that blow tube ready, putting it on my V blade, and now I'm going to attach my punty to the side because if I try to attach the blow tube at the 90 degrees and then detach the other blow tube, it's a much more difficult process to detach that blow tube and make it clean as opposed to just attach it at 90 degrees and then knock off the punty. Right, that cold seal, you know, semi cold seal punty will be a lot easier to take off than trying to do a weird torch maneuver with two handles at 90 degrees to each other. Maybe we should change the name of cold and hot seal punties to gradient punty and because I think that more accurately describes what's happening because it's not cold when it's attached cold it's it's a gradient of the heat very true you know maybe this is is what like uh, if one is the coldest and ten is the hottest this is a, a four yeah if 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 one is the coldest I'd say it's like two three four oh, okay. range you know something like that I mean I don't recall specifically this punny, but typically I aim for about a two or a three, where I just like literally flick it with my finger, right? Yeah, so that was like a two or a three. Popped right off. If we're using the new, just now invented <laughs> gradient punty scale. <laughs> Look for it soon, guys. <laughs> so now that you have that on your new blow tube, you're gonna go in and you're gonna heat that all up and really make it round on this axis and to prepare it to make it into a disc. Yeah, and one thing that I really like, which which I think is the treat for you know glass blowers or, or Kevin filming, any of you guys watching. The really the most beautiful point is right there. Look at that; it's glowing orange. It's spinning around, super mesmerizing. I like the process personally. I mean, I think you guys know that, but I'm really into the process, and I like the way that it looks, and the way that it feels, and the way that I feel when I blow glass. And that's like a prime example. And there's another shot later on in the video with a wigwag. Ooh, ooh, that one is real good. I mean, every time I see, you know, a hot wigwag spinning in the flame, I just, oh, oh man, it's good. It's, it's something good. amazing about it. I mean, I'm sure that's why you guys are watching the video in the first place and why you love glass, because you appreciate that too. But I think this unspoken thing should maybe be talked about a little bit, that glass is extremely beautiful while it's being worked. Right, and then also when it's done. Yep. So you're just gonna open up a hole here and then attach a blow tube to the other side and uh, shape the back backside again. Now I'm gonna detach the blow tube and this is gonna be leaving a little bit of clear glass on the piece so then I can pick it out and make sure that I really leave as much color as possible. Totally, rather than trying to get all the clear right when you do the detachment and maybe lose a little bit of color also, you can go in and be much more precise with the punty. Exactly. Now I'm just going back in there to heat that up, round it out, and then heat up the whole thing and make it really more spherical, kind of the shape that I want to in the end. Just getting that guy nice and warm, you know, kind of neutral mirage flame going here. These colors are nice because they don't require any real special flame to work with. Yeah, it's true. That red might be a little bit more sensitive, but it's certainly in the very stable range of colors. Right, right. Give it a little puff there, start to even it out. You can see it melting together. I'm just trying to stabilize it. One thing that somebody commented on one of the videos last week, which I thought was a great tip for beginners, was that when you take your glass out of the flame, you don't blow right away. You wait a few seconds, you know, five, 10, even 15 seconds, depending on how big and thick your piece is, to let all that heat equalize. And that really helps when you blow it out to be more centered. Helps the, helps the hot spots kind of even out with the cold spots and then you don't get a weird thin, thin spot when yep. you blow it out. Exactly. So I'm using my mini torch to blow out the other side of that bubble, heat that up, blow it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna go in with my jacks and just even out that hole. And you, you like to use your mini torch there because it lets you be really accurate with where the center is, right? Yeah, exactly. If you're turning the piece and holding the mini torch in the same place, it's just gonna fall on center. So you're gonna grab uh, a little piece of prep out of the kiln here to attach up a nice little wigwag ball in some matching colors. Yeah, I just happened to have this wigwag ball on the bench and wanted to use it for this piece. 
And of course, we have a couple videos with featuring Wigwags from Season 1, so we'll uh, link those up there in the corner so you guys can go check out the full technique for making a Wigwag. I really like Wigwags personally. I think it's one of my favorite patterns and designs. Alright, so check this out, guys. I really wanted to point this out to you. What just happened there is I'm, I pulled the glass thin, and it's actually sealed. There's a thin layer of clear. I heat it up, the air expands in the wigwag, and then bursts it open. And you can see it left a little side bleb on there that I have to cut off with my shears, but it really creates a nice even hole, and it's a very solid and consistent way to pop open a wigwag, which I use on almost every time I, I do a wigwag. You have to get the glass really, really thin for it to work, which is why you kind of did that pull and puff to get that very thin tail. Yeah. You guys practice. You know, you might mess it up a few times, be very careful with bubble trash, but I wanted to share that with you technique. It wasn't the last video, but we kind of glossed over it, but this time I wanted to point it out. Happy to get a nice good shot of it. Yeah. It's, it's always hard to see because it's so bright in the flame when sure, that happens, right? Sure. One thing I wanted to ask you guys, you know, I'd love for you to comment on the video, is do you remember your first piece of glass that inspired you to want to investigate this more? If maybe you're not a glass blower yet, or maybe you are, but do you remember like where that inspiration lied? What you saw that created that desire for you to explore this media more? I'd love for you to put that in the comments, find out you know, some of your thoughts on glass blowing. I remember it was a uh, old CCC 420 video and that featuring Dustin actually I think and you know that's what uh, that's what made me send him a message and here we are all these years later. That's so cool. Toph and um, uh, Shane and Shane, uh, uh, Dan. Dan. Yep. Yep. Nice. Yep. Yeah, those guys are local. They came by the studio, the old old, old studio. Oh, way back in the day. Yeah, filmed some stuff. Super cool guys. It's happy to work with them. That's interesting that that was your first like, wow, I should look into this more. Yeah. Oh, we're getting into some real gorgeous wigwag shots now, too. You have the wigwag sealed on, you're heating it out. Oh, and it's time for the Delta Mag Flame. Yep, I just pull that back a little bit, so as to not heat up uh, my TV, which is in front of me. Yeah, that, and also the camera, you know, try yeah. to keep the camera cool. So, we're uh, going in there, and oh, look at that, nice hot wigwag there. Spirals in multiple directions, and in combos, and wigwags, and oh my god. And of course, you know, you don't need a Delta Mag flame to do something like this. You could absolutely do this on a Mirage flame. You might not be able to get the whole thing as hot at once, take you a little bit longer, but totally do it, totally do it. Absolutely, this is even a small piece for a Delta Mag flame. And see, so you're back down to your Mirage flame already here and just getting that whole bubble warm. You know, you can see it moving around a lot on your blow tube. It takes a lot of you know, practice and, and keeping that on center there. You can see it goes off center, back on center. You know, it doesn't need to stay perfectly on center the whole time as long as that's where it ends up. That's actually a really good point. And it's really an Italian based technique where you're working the glass so hot that center is really a fluid place in the piece as you're working. And as long as you get that to be centered when you freeze it into place, you're good. One thing that I was told when I was in Italy, there's this really famous, amazing goblet maker called Caramea. And he said, in order to blow a goblet, you have to keep one butt cheek on the bench and one in front of the glory hole, which would be equivalent to the torch basically, because his piece was hot all the time and moving around. And then right before he puts in the kiln, psh, the thing becomes centered. That's great, that's great. It must have been amazing, you know, watching those guys work. It was like really old school and, um, you know, walk around, there's no cars and there's guys selling fruits and things on the street. And I'd go take a break from, from working with Cesare and then, you know, eat some pasta, <laughs> walk around, get some bread and cheese and salami. And, oh man, and then back into the hot, hot, hot shop. Yeah, it was cool. It was definitely an experience. So now you've got that guy off of your blow tube there. You're switching the axis again and, uh... That way you'll be able to really flatten it. Just kind of removing any excess glass there. Again, using my punny to pick that off carefully. But you can see it all kind of comes together. And I'm on the punny now. And just trying to even this out a little bit on the punny, flatten that disc part of it out. Ooh, that wigwag though. Totally getting it nice and flat. You can see, uh, just working it there and you know it's it's real hot even on this punty you know but uh just gotta make sure not to let it collapse or anything since you don't have a, a great way to blow into it 
Yeah, if there if I need to blow into it, I'd have to use the Sofietta tool. And also it's a bit of a precarious punny. So you want to be careful if you're just attached to a punny like this and doing that kind of stuff. Just trying to straighten it out and then pop that punny off. Right, you can see how quick easily that punny came off. You wouldn't want to be pushing on that. Right. Especially when it's hot. There we go, just marvering up my punny through the flame. You can see that to create that taper. Gives you a nice uh, small connection point. Yeah. Now I'm going to attach this here. And then I'm just going to kind of work that wig wag, work that side in a little bit, make sure that that's really the shape that I want and got out any tool marks or anything like that. Right, just wanted to give that whole surface some heating without distorting it. So, you know, short term punty, but you know, sometimes that's what you need. And now uh, keep that hot while uh, Dustin gets the old press out from behind there. It's kind of stuck back in the corner and man, that thing weighs a ton. So basically this is a collab piece, you guys, and <laughs> this is for one of you guys. <laughs> it's pretty special. Kevin doesn't usually touch the pieces, but... Yeah, now... that's. Uh, I think that's the first glass blowing I've done in uh, five <laughs> years, maybe? <laughs> But, uh, yep, so handed that back over to Dustin, and totally, yeah, this is for one of you. Make sure you comment, yeah. and we'll get that out. You can answer the questions, comment. So I got my press there. This is just an arbor press with some graphite. Heating that up, and then gonna put it in the press, make sure that's nice and flat. You guys can see that my bench is looks like wood, but it's actually tile. Those are pieces of tile that, that are really made to look like slabs of wood. I, I kind of thought that would be a cool look for the studio. Because you definitely want something that's heat resistant, you know, yeah. tile, ceramic, you know. Yeah, I started off with um, like fiberboard, ceramic board that you would use for tile under tile or something. And then I moved to um, stainless steel, which ended up warping. The, a lot of the benches from the old that. studio would warp when you get them real hot. So in the new studio, I wanted to try something new. And I went with the tile, and I've been really happy with it, you guys. Uh, it's been there for a couple years now. Um, no cracks or bends or anything like that. So I'd really recommend tile for your bench top surface. Just over like a, a hard, a hardy backer type surface, right? Yeah, just like you would tile a bathroom or a kitchen or something like that. And there we go. Now we got it flat, about an hour and a half in. And uh, let that sit in the kiln for a minute. I'm going to come back to temperature since you just kind of been working it a lot in the arbor press and in the flame. And for a minute, we mean about 10 minutes. Yeah, that's that's true. You want to leave things in the kiln long enough, they actually have a chance to fully come to equilibrium. You know, yeah. don't be putting it in and out really fast. It's, it's actually going to hurt you more than it'll help. Yeah, that's a, it's about 10 minutes is when that starts to happen. So I like to leave it in the kiln for about 10. The thing equalizes. I can bring it out and start working it again. Great chance to, you know, go, go take a little walk, get a drink of water, you know. Have stretch. a snack. Exactly. You gotta stretch when you're sitting exactly. down all day. Yeah, you wanna you wanna keep moving rather than you know, keep your legs moving too. So putting some little attachments on there for the horns you'll be doing. Yeah, this is like the little little basically gathers of glass that I just flatten out. You can see I'm heating it up. Then I'm gonna take my jacks, flatten it out. So it is calypso. That for sure is calypso that I'm using right there. Okay, so that other one must be uh, must be something else. We'll we'll try and figure out what it is here and we'll we'll put it on screen. So that, uh, that you're just going to pop in the kiln now while you shape up the horns you'll be attaching. So this is the solid piece that I gathered earlier and I'm going to heat this up, shape the horn. I love this color and the combination of the, the green and the blue and these pastel -y colors. Super awesome. It's right up my alley, right what I like to do. So you're just going to take a little 7 mil punty, stick on there. You know, I'd say that's what, a, a, a 7? Maybe that's, maybe yeah. that's a 9. On the, the left? Yeah, on the right hand. Right hand punty connection there. Uh, it's probably like a six or seven on the right hand, and on the left hand is about a ten. Right. These are the hottest of hot. Yeah. Fully welded. So you're just going to go in. You're actually going to split this in half since you'll want two horns. So I'm stretching it a little bit, making the first horn, and then I'm going to take it off and attach a second one. Right, you're, you're using this opportunity to appreciate both your first and second horn rather than just cutting that section in half. You start the taper and now you'll split them. Yeah, and you can totally, like especially with horns, you can really just take a cylinder and cut it in half so you know that your horns are symmetrical and then pull it out. Or you can pull out one like I did and then pull out the next one. Both of these would be like very acceptable for making horns. Totally, totally. I'm just going to start shaping this one. Put it on the marver there, get it nice and warm, get some heat into it, and you're going to compare it to the piece. Yeah, just kind of put it in place, see if it's the right size, 
if I need to do anything different. Put that in the kiln, grab my other piece. And you're gonna shape up your second horn so you have them both ready to attach to the piece. Yeah, you guys can prep up a bunch of pieces and a bunch of horns so that they're all ready to go. You can compare the sizes. And then when you have all that prepped, you should attach it to your piece. That way you have more control over what's being made and attached to create a higher quality end product. Right, get everything to flow nicely together. So you're grabbing that horn there and you're just gonna weld it onto uh, one of those little connection points you made. Yeah, just heat them both up, touch them down, give a little attach. Give a little pull. Yep. And uh, now you're gonna go in and shape that horn. Give it a nice flow. Yeah, so I'm just gonna pull the end off here and then pick that off with it, with my punty to create a nice taper that goes all the way fluid all the way to the end. Getting that whole horn nice and hot now and you'll use your tweezers to kind of do the initial shaping here. Get a nice curve to it. Yeah, use gravity and tweezers. And just heating that up, you can see it's starting to bend. Heating it up where I want the glass to move. This is a very important thing to keep in mind for beginners is that you want to heat the area that you want to move. See, you used almost all gravity for that and then just tweezers for the last little bit. Yep, just to kind of get it right where I want it. Little tweak, and you know, you could spend all day tweaking that, but you know, it's always a point where you get like, all right, time for the next horn. Yeah, and you want to be careful when you're bending horns and moving pieces to have these kind of curvatures in them. Make sure that the piece is really nice and hot because you could move it and then it could get divitrification or some you know, weird surface stuff on it if you, if it's not hot properly. Right, the whole thing consistently hot so there's not a cold spot that gets weirdly stretched, kind exactly. of. Exactly. So you got your second horn on there, just pulling that clear off, and now you'll shape that one as well. Yeah, and you can shape it going different directions, you know, whatever you guys want, have fun. You guys can totally do this. All you have to do is believe in yourself, keep practicing, keep moving the glass around, and this is your time. Your time to have freedom and just enjoy your process and what you're doing. Going in with the tweezers, just making sure that's really nicely where I want it. You can see the kind of, there's a little dynamic action between the two as, as one's pointing towards the other and it kind of keeps your eye moving through the piece and you know adds a little bit of excitement in the movement. Totally, totally. You decided to go go uh, asymmetric this time, which, yeah. I, which I liked it. You know, I wasn't sure, you know, which way you go this time, and I like you know, nice little flow. Yeah, different sizes slightly, and you know, curvatures are different. But because the way that the tips are, you just kind of your eye moves around the piece and doesn't really get stuck there. And now you're heating the whole thing back up since it's been out of the kiln for a while. It's getting kind of cold. You don't want to have that wigwag in any danger. And since you're going to be putting a lot of heat in here to open up the bowl hole. I want to make sure the whole thing is, is hot first, kind of nice heat base. Exactly, exactly, because it's going to be out of the flame for a little bit while I shape that bowl. And it's just like popping a bowl on a pipe, it's heated up, pop the hole. And use that bowl push now, and you're going to get that whole face again, hot again, paying a nice attention to the wigwag since that's a little more stress in there, all those different colors and the close proximity. Put it on your marver up here so you can see what's going on and get a good shot there. Push that in and turn a little bit, as you guys know, to make that bull push and the one part of this process that turns me from an artist into a criminal. Mm-hmm. I remember the first day I came and took photos, you said, you gotta go home and watch degenerate art if you want to come back. And I did, and man, it is a whole world I didn't even know about. Yeah, so for those of you guys that don't know, making pipes is still federally illegal. Um, so there was a big targeted bust of pipe makers called Operation Pipe Dreams. And it really made it known that the government thinks that making pipes is illegal. So it literally is the point of this process that is federally illegal. And it's so silly that I can just push glass that one way for a couple of seconds and there it is. Right, and now here I am being an accomplice <laughs> coming in to help, uh, help open up the carb since, uh, since, you know, it's kind of an awkward spot on the front of that and the mini torch was the best option there. Definitely, this is now definitely a collab piece. <laughs> oh, it's a uh, first collab, Dustin, right? Maybe? I, I maybe. Possibly. I don't De remember. Definitely the nicest. Uh, definitely the nicest. Definitely. A little more heat there. And, uh, 
good to go. Look at that. Cool. So now we got the carb in there. We got the bull pushed in there, the horns. We got our encomos and our wigwag. Just gonna shape this up a little bit. And then we'll be able to attach the bale and the mouthpiece. And we got a pendant for one of you lucky guys out there. Absolutely. So pop that in the kiln after uh, us a minute there so that it cools down a little bit. Don't want to be too hot so it slumps. And Last now... time, 10 more minutes in the kiln. Totally. And now we'll make the bale here in the, in the meantime. So this is a tube that I made earlier. It's a antidote bubble blowout. And I'm just going to pull it off open it up with the diamond shears on both sides and create a little bail for a string to go through the pendant. And, uh, I can't remember, I believe we did one of these back in the day. A, uh, what you got, tube, tube bail? Tube a bail. tube bail, I believe. I don't know. Well, what would we see? We had to. There was definitely one in the Italy video where mm. I worked with, um, Davide Penso. That was a great, that was a great video. That was yeah. so cool. Such so cool, cool work watching you guys work in his little shop there. Yeah. And he's been doing some interesting videos. You guys should check him out. Mm, totally. I'll, I'll link his channel. Yeah. Going in here at the old diamond shears. Get that. Uh, really lets you get in a nice connection point. Really get a sharp, sharp end to it. Kind of appreciate that as well. Yeah. Knock that off. Just cool it down. Bust it off. And now I'm going to be able to open that up with my reamer to make sure it's the nice right size. It says it's so small and you didn't want to, you know, distort it with a punty. Just going to use your, your little rod holder there. Yeah, totally. You know, these tools can be used for multiple things and don't be constrained to maybe what the design is or even what the rules are. Just try to stay safe and, you know, work from your heart and your desire to create. I'm gonna go in and attach a, a 90 degree punty here, which you'll end up using to attach it to the piece. And that's a very small punty with a cold seal, a, a gradient seal on the colder side. Right, you know, maybe two, three, uh -huh. if that. And then you go with a little bit more of that Calypso, create a little connection to kind of mirror the colors you have going on in the horns. Yeah, exactly. You want to make sure you use your colors consistently throughout the piece. And even for these little attachments and things, you really want to use color that's matching with your piece, unless clear is part of your design. But don't be lazy and just put some clear on there. Totally, totally. So now you've got your pendant back out of the kiln. And uh, actually, I guess this is what will make it a pendant. You're just gonna attach the bale on there. Hey, anything can be a pendant, if, as long as you attach a bale. Exactly. <laughs> we saw a lot of that back in the day. <laughs> right? Oh, make it a pendant. Pendants are hot right now. <laughs> so just getting in there, heating everything up, popping that on. I actually I honestly don't miss pendant rigs, a little aside. That really? was dangerous. Yeah. Pendant rigs, so that's a hot, a hot swinging thing. Just getting that on there, going in with your mini torch, and you just make sure that's nicely welded in. Of course, you don't want this swinging and hitting something and suddenly falling on the ground. Yeah, we want to make sure that's a good seal, melted all the way in, kind of go in carefully, and then once it's all sealed, I'll be able to adjust it to make sure it's nice and level, nice and even. Just going in, heating it from all sides, and you're not worrying about it straight right now, you're just making sure it's in and now you're going with your tweezers and uh, straighten it up make sure it's straight from all angles yep exactly you can turn your piece around look at it like multiple angles like I'm doing here making sure that it all looks straight from multiple angles maybe adjust it a little bit look down look across and boom I actually didn't catch uh, Dustin taking it off the blow tube but there you go and it's, you know it's just making a mouthpiece like any other you can see that lovely wigwag on the front I'm digging that one Cool, yeah. And this is obviously for one of you guys. You can see the nice blues and purples in here with the antidote. And I love that wigwag on the front. And it's kind of cool because you can wear this pendant out to a party. No one's going to know it's a pipe. But when the time is right, you just bust it out. Who's got a pipe? I got one that's been in front of you the whole time. Dude, that's uh, people blow their mind. And uh, anything, nothing's better than a nice wigwag match with some matching colors. And uh, very nice. Thanks for watching you guys. See you on the next one. Welcome back you guys. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something, a tip or a trick, something you can use in your own work. Absolutely, that was a fun one. Those hot shots of the wigwag. Woo, I know we keep talking about them, but they're just so good. So, so pretty, good. so beautiful. All right, Dustin, I got some questions for you from the last video. First up from Feral Gore is, what do you find is the best gauge silver wire for fuming? Or do you just use coins? Actually, I use sheet, like a very, flat small sheet and uh, you can get your 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 silver into a sheet by going to a jeweler 
or uh, a metal worker who might have a mill and you can ask them to flatten out your silver coin or your wire because if you use your shears on the coin, you really get big chunks and dull your shears. And wire is okay too, but I, I personally like sheet, like thin sheet. You get a little nicer piece on the end of your rod when you're fuming, you yeah. can get good good um, deposit of the silver off of that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Nice. All right, up next here from Matthew Gibson. How strong of a vacuum pump is needed for vac stacks? He's fine in a lot of quarter horsepower pumps. You know, is that enough? Yeah, it's definitely enough. It might be a little bit too much. You could use one of those nebulizers for people with asthma or maybe a fish tank pump. I have a quarter horsepower vacuum, like professional vacuum pump in the studio. And I find that I have to open up multiple ports along the line so that it lessens the vacuum so that it won't collapse my tubing. Because um, if it's too strong, it'll just collapse the tubing. Totally, actually close it up and then your, your back stack is real ruined. You don't want that with all that color in there. Especially at the end, too, yeah. is when it tends to do it. But right, yeah. right. All right, and last one up here from David Means. Do you think it's worth it from either a financial or time efficiency standpoint to learn how to use a steel blowpipe? And he's talking about for like solid color blowouts. I mean, yeah, definitely, yes. I love that technique. Uh, I've used it for years and years. You can create tubing much faster. You don't get those lines from coil potting. You have a multitude of colors. You can have any color tubing that you have a rod of in your studio within 20 minutes. So yeah, definitely worth your time and money and effort to learn that technique and to use it in your work. Totally. I think so anyway. Totally. And those blowpipes last really well too. You know, they're, they're really durable. So. Yeah, they last like 10 years or so or more. It depends on how much you use them. Over time, the the tip of the blow tube tends to erode a little bit with the heat and the glass, but uh, they last a very long time. Nice. Very cool. Well, I think it's uh, time to give away this spoon from last time, Dustin. Really? Is it that time it again? It sure is. It's that time again. All right, guys, first giveaway of season two goes to Jimmy Wayne Fago. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jimmy Wayne Fago. I really appreciated the comment. It's one of my favorite comments, so thank you so much. I love those ones. Absolutely, and make sure to drop a comment down below, a question, something like that, because we will be giving away this pendant to, uh, to somebody in the next video. Yeah, ask me some questions. Let me know what you think of the video. Give us some tips and tricks. Like and subscribe. We'd love for you to turn on those notifications so that we can see you in a couple weeks. Absolutely. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you next time. All right. See you soon.